This is the Sites Family Homestead, and this is our winter preparedness group of videos. Um, we've already talked a little bit about our animals outside and what it takes to keep them alive and healthy over winter. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about how we keep the property healthy and ready. And not just the property, but the things on it, um, but still focusing outside. So one of the first things I like to do in the fall is we will check our trailers, um, anything with extra tires that is not a daily driver. Uh, make sure the tires are in good shape. Make sure the lights still work, which is an ongoing battle if you have work trailers. Um, if they have batteries on them, some of our larger trailers have winches and deep cycle batteries. Checking those, making sure they're good because of course the day that they're bad is the day that I need to use it. Um, in the fall and this time of winter, I am using our bigger trailers a lot going and getting firewood and bringing it back. And the last thing I want to do is get ready to go get firewood and find out that my trailer is broken or something is not working on it and stopping that process because I have a limited amount of time to get the firewood that we need for our house. Um, our trailers sit outside and they are on our driveway parking area. It is a gravel area. And so checking that, making sure that my plow is in good order um, so that we can get out and we both have four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive vehicles, but sometimes we still get enough snow where it's difficult. And one of the big ones that we found when we first moved in here is plowing the property from the back of our house out to the barn and around all the, the animals so that we have easy access and we're not trying to get through two feet of snow at four o'clock in the morning while we're doing everything out there. Um, making sure that we have salt on hand and ice melt um, things like that. I do keep a pretty close eye on what kind of products we use outside because we are on a well. And the last thing I want to do is find some caustic material that gets into our water source and then our house really isn't livable anymore without water. Um, I am in disaster um, construction and so I keep a lot of tarps, cap nails, and roof sealants um, for those winter storms. We're pretty far out there and certainly we could call somebody to help. Um, but help is always hours away and if I can stop water or something from coming in, it's come in handy in the past and I'm sure it will again. Knock on wood, not too often. Um, but it's something to keep on hand. Um, we have some large trees and when we get big windstorms, I'm always concerned that they're going to come down or cause damage. So trying to be ready for that as much as we can. Um, living rurally, we heat with propane. Um, so in this fall, we try to make sure that we stock up on the propane. We get our large tank um, filled at the lower summer and fall prices because that does go up with the seasons. So right now, if we would have to purchase more, it would be significantly more expensive than when we topped off in September. Um, while I'm doing that, I do al also top off all of our small tanks that I really just use for barbecue grills or the, um, the jet burners or things like that. Um, they just kind of keep it so we have it. We don't have to worry about going to get it last minute. Um, we heat with firewood primarily. We have a propane furnace as a backup. So this is firewood season for me. Every weekend or so, I'm going out and getting as much firewood as I can get my hands on. I'm splitting it and stacking it. Um, ash borer disease is rampant in our area. And ash is a wood that you can burn very well without having to be seasoned. So it's great for us. Um, we keep some for next year and I can burn some of it now, get it in very large chunks. Um, we have an outdoor wood boiler, so it can be a little green, but um, we do start to steer away from really green hardwoods. Um, and we can take a look at that in another video. Um, this is the time of year that the garden is completely done. Everything in there is dead. And so preparing that for spring now sets us up for success next year going through and amending any of the beds that need done, um, recovering them with hay or straw, um, cardboard in some cases if we're creating new areas. Uh, we follow the Ruth Stout method, so there is no watering, very little weeding, and very little work. Um, the work doesn't come throughout the season, it comes now. So preparing for it today will set us up for next year. Um, all of our outdoor equipment, we try to get either exercised or winterized. So if we're winterizing our tools that are hand tools or things like that, one second. All of the wooden tools get checked, they get sharpened, they get cleaned, 
and if it's got a wooden handle every year it gets boiled linseed oil so the old saying is boiled linseed oil goes on a wooden tool once a day for a week once a week for a month once a month for a year and once a year for the rest of your life and it will make that wood last it protects it keeps it looking nice keeps it moist it's what you need to do every year to make things last and once that first year is done it's very low maintenance um, we go through our gas tools as well I do a complete tune-up on every gas tool you can see my chainsaws behind me this is not the time of year they get handled because this is the time of year they get worked but our trimmers our blowers our edgers things like that um, I will go through check spark plugs clean the carburetors um, I don't winterize those tools I exercise those tools every month I will go out and start them for about 25 or 30 minutes run them make sure we've got good fuel going through and keep an eye on that 